And now it's my pleasure to invite uh, Flori Kukuli. He's going to present on the healing ac accomplished with the Novo Cirolim Zelutin Solution SLR balloon, a case based discussion. Thank you very much Flori. for the kind introduction. Um, it's a great pleasure to um, demonstrate some interesting cases once it works. Yeah. Um, if you um, look what we have to discuss, I think really um, the main question is which are the lesions we can use DCB. And then I would like to show you our um, lesion preparation strategy, which is quite unique, I think. And of course, in some cases with uh, OCT follow-up. Um, always the question is, are these the patients we should use drug eluting balloons or drug coating balloons? Because, you know, um, all this, this is, hasn't changed in the years, have high rates of instant restenosis. And actually, in my daily life, I try to uh, apply drug coated balloons to all these kind of lesions. But there is more than this. For example, a patient like this. You can see this patient is uh, having a calcified thrombotic lesion, and this patient is unwilling to trade, take uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. Um, I didn't, at this time point, I did not know if I can treat this lesion with a drug coated balloons. But I think, uh, as I do in my uh, every case I treat, let's consider a DCB for every lesion I treat. As you can see, the lesion is calcified, thrombotic, and it is a large diameter. Um, so, the Lucerne way of, of preparing lesion before we use DCB is uh, to use a Wolverine balloon to cut the lesion. We have done this now in, in uh, over 400 patients. And then we use an open and see a highly non-compliant balloon for controlled luminal gain. And then we go in and use an undersized, a rather undersized DCB um, balloon to avoid further dissection because we don't like to, to stretch the vessel. And this has been really done now consecutively for, for more than 400 patients. In this patient, as you can see, I use 3, 5, 20, um, at 20 atmospheres Wolverine. Then I use the OPN uh, 4 o at 20 atmospheres for luminal gain. And then I use a solution 4 o 20, as you can see, at really low uh, pressure at 6 atmospheres for 90 seconds. And then I uh, use the FFR um, to assess the distal lesion. And the result is acceptable. It's not perfect, but it's acceptable. This is the, what it looks like on OCT. I did OCT as I do in many cases. I use DCB. Um, you can see the vessel is, is a bit dissected, and it, uh, but the rest of the lumen uh, is so large that I did not consider putting a stent in here. Because this is so novel, I very often bring those patients back to just also gain safety uh, for myself. So I, I brought the patient back after seven weeks because he's really unwilling to take um, dual antiplatelet therapy, and this is the deal we made with each other. We will, we will have a look back at this patient. And this is what it looks like after um, seven weeks. And as you can see on OCT, and I will let um, the run, uh, the OCT run pass, uh, you can see there is no more dissection, and the vessel looks quite um, healed. And it looks actually much, much better than it looked seven weeks ago. Now, if you go in, and um, there was a nice side branch at the, uh, and, and a nice calcium chunk, so we went to the same spot. And you can see on the left side the lesion as it presented initially, then the lesion, what it looked like uh, after treatment, and then what it looked like after seven weeks. And the MLA goes up from 1.2 to 6.3 square millimeters, which is expected. But at seven weeks, we have an MLA of 12.4 square millimeters, which is fantastic. Uh, of course, here we need to adjust the calibration, but this is how it presents. And we are now in the process of, of uh, ana analyzing also other cases we have performed like this. Now, we have this 40 years old diabetic man with a chronic total occlusion of his uh, right coronary artery, especially the posterolateral branch. Uh, in this patient, of, he has been treated with stents on the left side. Um, I don't know why he was not operated. Uh, according to guidelines, he should have been. But now he comes to my uh, place with this presentation. 
Um, here, for the proximal part, I could not um, use DCB because it dissected so badly, I had to use a stent uh, or two stents. But for the distal part, actually, I said, fine, let's, let's uh, leave it as it is because it has good flow and it's a CTO, so it's maybe more forgiving. And again, in this patient, I brought him back after three months to gain safety for, for the patient, but also for myself to just be sure that what I'm doing is, is, is right. And this is what the lesion looks like now. And as you can see, the distal part has nicely remodeled and compared to the stented part, now the distal vessel is quite big because the proximal part has not become, um, has not changed much, the stented part. And if you look again on OCT for both patient, for both um, the baseline and, and the follow-up, um, again, the calibration needs to be adjusted, but you can see that we had quite bad uh, dissections um, however, it, uh, the, the lumen was so big that uh, we left it, and as you can see, the endothelium again is nicely healed, and we have lovely luminal gain again. And maybe the, this patient as well, um, this is a young man, 39 years old, with this um, LED diagonal bifurcation. And um, the, run, the OCD run at the top is the, the run immediately post-procedure, and then the other one is um, the run at follow-up, which was six months in this case. And as you can see again, uh, on geographically, but also on OCT, we have this nice diagonal, which, uh, which uh, as a landmark, uh, and you, you, can, you can appreciate that we have a nice lumen and the patient does not need a stent. Uh, and maybe the final case um, here, um, you, this is, was also a proximal LED stenosis in a lady. We used, again, cut and crack with a 3-0 solution. And then we did OCT at, at three months. And again, um, we have lovely luminal gain. Um, and we had these bad dissections in the, um, on, uh, on panel B here. However, this also healed and gained lumen. So um, this, is, this looks very promising. Of course, I don't have OCT imaging in every um, patient I treat, and especially uh, OCT imaging at baseline follow-up, but we follow up our patients closely because I think it's very important because I'm, I know I'm breaking some rules and I know I'm, I'm in a way moving forward and, and going in, into indications which are not standard, so I need to gain some safety. That's why my threshold to do a cornea angiogram in such patients is quite low. In this patient, this was a CTO of the circumflex. I used two solutions. This is a diabetic patient, and as you can see, uh, the luminal uh, result, the angiographic result after six months is really good considering that this patient would have ended up with 70 millimeters of stent, and I'm sure that many patients with such a long stent um, would, would probably have insane restenosis. So my final remarks, our experience um, with the solution balloon, um, which, where we use more than 500 patients is excellent. I think it's important to speak about lesion preparation because I think this is really uh, what will decide which way we will go. I think. At the end, this, this is, a, for me, a crucial thing, and I have the feeling that we don't speak enough about this topic, and I would urge also our group to really speak about this topic. I think intravascular imaging demonstrates nice vascular healing in a short period of time, and we even demonstrate early luminal gain, of course, in some selected cases, but this is interesting because, um, uh, to me, this is, it has a big potential also for, uh, for even a broader use. And I think the OCT, uh, the, the DCP future is going to be exciting and let's shape this future together. Thank you very much.